Hey folks, welcome back for another episode of Code Club. I'm so glad that you're with me as we start this new series of episodes where I will be building a new R package. I have never made an R package before. Someone asked me recently, how long have you been writing in R? And I think it's been about maybe 15 or 16 years, and somehow I've never managed to make an R package. I think it was because I was too scared to make a package because I'd seen on social media all sorts of kind of complaining about the process of submitting a package and the feedback and just, ah, it just seemed like way too much. But thankfully, Jenny Bryan and Hadley Wickham, I guess the uh, the author list is Hadley Wickham and Jenny Bryan, whatever, uh, put out this great book, R Packages, and they've been building a lot of great tools around package development in R using the dev tools, use this, uh, test that, and a variety of other tools that all come together to make it a lot easier to write and submit your own R package to CRAN. So we're gonna do that. Over the next series of episodes, I am going to be working with you all to build a set of tools in a package that will read in DNA sequences and then will output classification of those sequences so we know who those sequences came from. Now, you might be saying like, Ugh, this, who cares? Well, I care, but anyway, um, I had to pick some something to do, right? I had to pick something to make a package on, and so this is what I'm gonna do. One of the motivations for this, besides wanting to learn how to make an R package, is that a very popular tool in the microbiome, microbial ecology field, the ribosomal database project, went offline last summer, and so I would like to create a way to make its functionality more broadly accessible. Yes, the classifier is available in my tool, Mother, other tools like Chime 2 and probably some others, but it would be nice to have an R package that can do it because then maybe it would be easier to post it up uh, to a new website, perhaps a new version of the Ribosome Database Project, the RDP. So that's what we're gonna do. Please don't be scared off by the topic. I had to pick something. It was either this or sheep. So, you know, <laughs> pick your poison and maybe we'll get to those sheep before we're all said and done. All right, so we're gonna basically do what we did in the last episode, but applied to a new project. I, you may have noticed in the previous episode that I had a few problems around the DevTools check function. I got that squared away. It turns out I had something installed on my computer in a place that it wasn't supposed to be. Odds are good, you would never have that problem. So we'll move right along. And the first question is what are we gonna name this thing? So I have come up with a list of possible names. Again, what this tool is going to do is it's gonna take sequence data and output a classification for that. And so we need a name, right? Because the name is what everyone's gonna be calling it forever, right? Um, so I've previously had tools like daughter and mother and sons, kind of a family theme there. I've had tree climber, slibshuff, uh, I think that's about it. Um, and, and so picking a name is really hard. So sometimes people will pick an acronym. I hate acronyms because the acronym is always just garbage, right? Like it, it just, it doesn't mean anything. Mother is not an acronym. Daughter, uh, D-O-T-U-R is distance-based OTUs and richness. See what I mean? It's just, it's really contrived. And so mother <laughs> doesn't mean anything um, except that it was a nod to my daughter and to my wife. Um, and yeah, so picking a good name um, we can't have any like symbols in the name for an R package. I prefer to have everything be all lowercase because you get to something like Lefsa, which has all sorts of crazy capitalization. It's kind of like you know SpongeBob SquarePants capitalization, um, and and so I'd prefer everything to be lowercase. Uh, there's a general trend in R package names to have an R in them. Um, that's not always adhered to, but it's pretty common, kind of like read R, tidy R, <laughs> uh, deploy R, right? Uh, and so we want it to describe what it's doing. Um, the other aspect is that we don't want it to already be used, and we don't want it to be too common, right? So like, if I'd have named mother, mother with an E instead of a U, well, Google would probably never find it until it got super popular, and it probably wouldn't get super popular because no one could find it, you know what I mean? Um, and so I've got nine or so names here, um, most of which I don't really like at all. And so I wanna kind of go through why I do or don't like them. So I like Phylotyper because Phylotype is what we do when we classify sequences. So if I take a sequence and I classify it and say, oh, that's an Escherichia or oh, that's a Bacillus, we have Phylotyped it, right? And so Phylotyper, uh, uses that R motif, and it also does, hopefully, <laughs> what it says it is, right? 
Mother 2, eh, um, I'm not such a fan of that. Mother is far more than just classification, and I'm not ready here to build out a whole new version of Mother as an R package, but maybe we'll get to that someday. Classify R, um, that's, that's a possibly good name, so I'll put that up the list. Classifier um, is probably too, too generic, right? Um, it, it's, it's not gonna be very accessible via Google, right? Um, 16S, um, eh. Uh, actually, this is not allowed because you can't start a package name with a number, as I understand it. So you can have numbers in a package name, but it can't be the first character. 16R is another idea I had. R actually is the successor to S. So there was an S programming language, and then it was followed up by R. It's kind of the opposite of C and C++. Um, RDP um, could do that, but I feel like I'm stepping on their toes, and I don't, I don't want to do that. RDP tools, kind of the same idea. Riffamonas being the name of this channel. Eh, um, I would like Riffamonas to be far more than classifying sequences. So again, we have this tension between being super specific and super generic, right? Like something like 16S or 16R, um, or even putting that in the name, I feel like would be too constraining because I know people use uh, the classifier within mother, at least, to do things other than 16S. So I don't wanna to be too restrictive. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these names over to Google and see what we find. With classifier, and so this shows up already as being a package in Bioconductor. So that's, that's not gonna work. Um, I guess we could look and see, well, what, what is it doing? Yeah, so I'm not totally sure what this is doing, but it's, it's not classifying sequences, so that's fine. But, but again, the package already exists, and that's, that's going to cause confusion. We don't want to do that. What happens if we do classifier? Um, this gets us a whole bunch of stuff <laughs> on classification. Uh, what if we did classify 16S? Um, we get papers. So there doesn't seem to be anything that pops up here. Um, if we do phylotyper, uh, I see that there is a paper that was published on a tool called Phylotyper uh, in silico predictor of gene subtypes. Um, it turns out that this is actually a Python package. Um, if we go to their GitHub repository, we see that it's, it's really a, a Python package that I think uses R, if I understand it right. One of the things that stands out to me is that this has not been touched in seven years. Um, and so this is on the border of I like and I don't like. <laughs> um, and so that's um, a little bit, um, has me a little bit cautious about pursuing using Phylotyper as my package name. So we can go to the CRAN website at cran.r-project.org. CRAN is the um, an, an archive of R packages. So it's the comprehensive R archive network, right? Um, and so we can go to packages and then we can look at um, table of available packages sorted by name. And so let's go to classify. Let's see if we have anything here by uh, classify. So there's a bunch of things that have this. Uh, so algae classify, let's see classify R. Um, so the classify R right was a bioconductor page. Uh, if we do classifier, um, I'm just kind of let's, but that's going to be up in the C's, right? Uh, so we'll come down. Let's see. I don't really like this name again because it's so easily Googled. Uh, it's not very unique, right? And so class, classify. Uh, so classifier. Uh, doesn't show up, but really, if I'm going to do classifier, I want classify with an R. So, so let's look at phylotype. And so again, scrolling down here, I guess I could search phylo uh, T, right? So there's no phylotype, right? So there's phylotate, phylotools, phylotop, um, and these all have to do with phylogenies. So that's uh, different enough. And uh, kind of these other phylos up here also have a lot to do with kind of evolutionary things, right? So it, it gets us kind of in the right ballpark. Uh, you'll see PhyloSeq graph test here. PhyloSeq itself, which is another popular tool within the microbial ecology world, is actually over in Bioconductor. Bioconductor is another repository where you can get R packages. 
I'm not totally sold that I want this to be in Bioconductor. I don't want my first package to be a Bioconductor package because my sense is that Bioconductor is even more <laughs> of a pain to get through than Crayon. So I kind of like Philotyper, and I think I will run with that. So if you don't like that name, could you let me know? <laughs> if you have a better idea for a name, let me know. Um, until we publish this to Crayon, I think we have a lot of latitude in what we call this. But for now, my working name for this project will be Philotyper. So in the last episode, I used the create underscore package function from DevTools. This time around, I'm gonna do something slightly different, mainly to kind of show you a different way to do it. And so we'll do file, new project. And then from here, I'll go ahead and do new directory. And then I want a new R package. And so it's gonna be a package and it's gonna be called Philotyper. I guess we could always also drop that E, make it Philotip R. Eh, that's just too confusing. Um, I don't have any source files at this point and I'm gonna put it off of my desktop and I'll go ahead and have it open in a new session. So we'll create that project. This then relaunches R in R Studio. Already I see a small difference between using the create underscore package function and using the dialog through R Studio. And that is that it creates a hello.r script, which is being stored in my R directory where we keep um, all of our R code, right? So again, what we saw previously, we have this git ignore, the R build ignore file, which ignores the things uh, that we don't want to end up in the final kind of package that goes up to Crayon. We have a preliminary description that we'll modify here in a bit. There's a directory uh, with documentation that they've already created with hello.rd. Uh, there's a namespace, which again, we don't want to touch ourselves. We want to let um, dev tools and use this modify namespace for us. Uh, there's this um, our project file that keeps track of a lot of the settings that we're using. And we already saw that the R scripts, R code goes into the R directory. Very good. So I want to get a variety of things set up in the rest of today's episode so that when we come back, we're ready to get going with coding. The first thing I'll do is use underscore git because I love using version control and think everyone should be using it too. It's complaining, I could not find function use git. Um, and so that is because um, I haven't loaded dev tools. So one of the tricks that I showed in the last episode is that we can create a .r profile file that automatically loads dev tools whenever we start our project. So we can instead use, use this, uh, use underscore dev tools. And so this use this colon colon is a, um, is a construction that we'll be seeing as we go about programming in our package. This allows me to use the use dev tools function from the use this package without doing library use this. So this is opening up my global.r profile file. This is the r profile file that I have in my home directory that tells r which CRAN repository to use to install packages from. This isn't where I wanna put it. I wanna put it within my project directory. And so to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new text file. I'll call it .r profile. So that's there and I now see it here as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy the code. Like I guess it had already copied it for me, it said, and I could paste it. So what this means is that it will require dev tools. Require is a lot like library, except if it's not installed, it'll go ahead and install it for you. Suppress messages means that it'll make it do it quietly. Okay, so I'll go ahead and save this. And now whenever I restart R, those changes will take effect. So for this session, I'll go ahead and do library dev tools. And next time <laughs> we go through this, it'll automatically load it. Okay, where were we? Oh yeah, use git. So we'll do use underscore git. And again, if I open this up a little bit bigger, uh, there's eight committed files. Is it okay to commit them? I agree, so I'll do number one. Again, remember, it usually gives us these options in different orders with different titles. So you have to, you have to be paying attention to what you're doing. So again, it created a commit with the message initial commit. If I come over to my git window and press refresh, I see that everything has been committed. And again, if I look at the history window, I see that it's got one commit already logged. I now wanna get this up to GitHub. And so I'm going to again, use use underscore GitHub. And I could leave this empty. I'm gonna go ahead for now and put this into my Riffamonas account. Um, so if you're doing it on your own parallel to me, go ahead and don't give any arguments to use GitHub. I'm gonna do organization uh, Riffamonas. It will then go through a dialogue to set this all up. 
Is it okay to commit them? It made a change to the description file. That is okay. And now here we go. We now have our GitHub repositories all set up for our Philotyper package. Awesome, we're out there, right? That's really cool. Now we have to do some stuff, right? So there's two things that this page makes me think about. Number one is that I need to put in a license. Number two, I need to put in a readme file. So let's start with the license and we'll go ahead and do use underscore MIT license. And that's a function again with no arguments that then creates a license and a license MD and it puts the full license markdown file, this one, um, that name into our .rbuild ignore file because when we submit this, CRAN doesn't want the full text of the license. They have a much simpler version of the license, which is this here. We could go ahead and commit these changes, of course. So I'll go ahead and do that now. And then I'll say use MIT license, commit that, close it. So the other thing I wanna do is the readme file. So we'll go ahead and do use readme underscore RMD. This also then is creating the RMD file and it's putting that RMD file into my rbuild ignore. It creates this um, default uh, readme file and it's got all sorts of good stuff in there that we'll come back and play with later. But for now, what I wanna do is I wanna build the markdown file, right? So I'll do build readme. Again, no arguments. And so now we see that we have both readme files here. This readme will then show up on our repository when we go back into GitHub. So that's looking great. I'm gonna go back to my description file now and we'll go ahead and edit this to make it a little bit more informative about what's going on. And I'll say implementation of tools for classifying DNA sequences. So I'm noticing that the author and maintainer information here is a little bit different than what we had with the regex site from the previous episode. Let me go ahead and pull that up so I can show you what I mean. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and grab this instead. So I'll go ahead and grab these and hopefully it won't cause any problems. And it's also grabbed an older version, right? So we'll talk about version numbers later, but this is a very much more preliminary version number than what we had uh, previously. I'll go ahead and change my email address to my professional email, pschloss at umich.edu. I've got my ORCID ID that I'll pop in here and then a description, um, use four spaces when, in, 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 okay. Um, so I'll go ahead and do um, package for uh, classification based analysis of DNA sequences, primarily implements um, naive, Bayesian classifier from the ribosomal database project. Cool, all right, so that's good enough for now. Everything else there looks good. I'll go ahead and close these files. Let me go ahead and run document to update all the documentation that there might be. So these changes are all related to some preliminary documentation. So I'm gonna go ahead and stage these and commit them as um, preliminary effort to write documentation. Okay, commit that. So the other thing that I want to do is go ahead and set up the, the infrastructure, the skeleton for tests. And so to do that, we'll use use test that. And so now we see that we have a tests directory. We have this test that test that.r script that we should not be modifying. So I'll go ahead and close that. And then we have our test that, uh, test that directory right within tests that is currently empty because we haven't created anything um, that we want to test, right? So let's see what changed in the description file. Um, yeah, it's added the test that stuff, okay? So that's all good. Again, I don't know that I need to run document again because we changed the description file, but so it updated the phylotype or documentation. Okay, I guess it doesn't hurt to try, right? The other thing that we can do is run uh, load all. So load all will load everything, all the R scripts in the R directory into the current session. That works without any errors. Basically what we're looking for are errors. <laughs> and then we can do check. This is where I ran into problems last time. 
this goes through without an issue, which I'm happy to see. So I'm getting one error, um, and I think that error is with test that because I don't have any tests. So it's failing on that. So I think what I'll do is go ahead and do use test, and the file in here is hello. So I'll go ahead and do use test, hello. This then creates tests, test that, test hello, right? And then I can do test, and it tests it, it passes, right? And so now if I retry the check, so that got rid of the error. I do have one note saying malform description field should contain one or more complete sentences. So let me go back up to my description file. Maybe I need two sentences. This package primarily, oh, right. We will likely include other methods of classification and possibly some methods of visualizing the data. Okay, so go ahead and save that. Let's try this check again. So the documentation uh, in the R packages book suggests running check numerous times, frequently running check, because you don't want these problems to fester. And so although it's a note, um, notes uh, may not be the kiss of death for submitting to Crayon, but we want to get those notes resolved as best we can. Again, I think this documentation is really going to evolve as we go through, so I'm not totally worried about it at this point. Sure enough, that took care of the note, and now I don't have to worry about it. Okay, so now we've got that all saved. I'm going to go ahead and add uh, these changes to my repository. These were built around tests, so I'll go ahead and do um, create testing infrastructure using test that. There's another uh, R-based testing infrastructure besides test that, which I think is R-unit, um, but test that I think is becoming a lot more popular these days. So I'll go ahead and commit that, close it, and then we'll go ahead and push this to the repository. Refreshing, I now see that we've got a lot more stuff in here, and we have, sure enough, um, our readme file that has been uh, converted, <laughs> and you'll see this, this plot is um, automatically generated. And so this is looking good as a skeleton for our R project, Phylotyper. Again, if you like that name, let me know down below in the comments. If you don't like that name, let me know down below in the comments, and definitely uh, give me some suggestions. It's not too soon uh, to change the name, but... Um, it's kind of growing on me. So as I go through this, I hope you're also thinking about your own work and packages that you might go ahead and want to create. And so if you can develop your package in parallel to my package, I think that would be really awesome and that would really help you to reinforce the concepts and the techniques that I'm gonna be talking about in this series of episodes. All right, take care and we'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.